already set schedule. So without delay, as I said, as I already informed, each presenter gets 10 minutes to present. After the paper presentation, all four paper presentation, our distinguished commentators will give comments uh, to his papers within uh, 10 minutes. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Asok Bhandari to present the papers on topic Walking the Top, Opportunity for Nepali Businesses to be Ethical and Socially Responsible. And I will interrupt two minutes before the finishing the time. So be punctual. I have to be strict because I have to leave at three or uh, up to three, uh, three to 15 minutes because I have to attend another uh, conference. That's why I cannot delay. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. <clears throat> My title for the talk today is Walking the Talk. Opportunities for Nepali businesses to be ethical and socially responsible. And I think this goes well with the theme of the conference. It's about trade and development and sustainability. So in order for businesses to compete better, I propose that they have to be ethical and socially responsible. Talking the talk is easy. Talking the talk is cheap. But walking the talk is a different matter. Walking the talk takes serious work. And this is about, this is, this is a matter of ethics. Because ultimately, individuals and organizations alike are judged not by what they say, but what they do. So walking the talk is doing what you're saying. If you do what you say, then you're in sync with what you say and what you do. But if you just say and not do things, then there's a problem. <clears throat> and too often, many managers say things that contradict their behavior. They may say things that may be too optimistic for multiple reasons. <clears throat> they may be trying to appease a particular audience. They may try to be, they may be trying to manage their appearances. They may be trying to hide their failures. And that's a problem. <clears throat> so when you talk about ethics, particularly for business ethics, this is one of the definitions that we use, that businesses, they have responsibilities not just towards their stakeholders, their shareholders, and customers, but it extends to the community, to the environment. They have uh, responsibilities, they have obligations to multiple stakeholders. And a lot of businesses are coming to realize that. Earlier, we used to think that businesses so just keep their shareholders happy, keep their customers happy, but that's not enough. <clears throat> this idea of uh, business's obligations towards different stakeholders comes from this diagram here, which we refer to as Carol's CSR pyramid, Corporate Social Responsibility Pyramid. This is different from earlier thinking about corporate social responsibility, which we said that businesses had only be one, had only one responsibility to be profitable. And that was the view of Milton Friedman. But since we've grown since, and they have responsibilities, yes, to be profitable, but do that by following the law. And then they also have additional responsibilities to be ethical and to be a good corporate citizen. So in this talk, I'll be talking mainly, I'll be focusing mainly on the top two responsibilities of businesses. That I assume that businesses 
want to be profitable, that's, that's assumed. And that I assume that businesses have to comply with law because otherwise they'll be punished. Um, however, do our businesses being ethical, are they fulfilling that responsibility? And are businesses being good corporate citizens? So, <clears throat> when we talk about businesses, Nepali businesses in particular, we have to also be reminded about Nepal's business institu institutions, that Nepal's business institution function in an environment that's primarily relationship-based, not rules-based. In rules-based uh, governance, rules take precedence, that there's focus on rules and that not complying with the rules is punishable. However, in relationship-based uh, governance, which we have in countries like ours, relationships are important and that invites opportunities for unethical behavior. And this has been proven by multiple indices of Nepal's business market institutions and their uh, ranking. We fall behind on pretty much every <coughs> single index the Corruption Index, the uh, Global Innovation Index, the Best Country for Business Index, we fall behind our neighbors and we fall behind pretty far. <clears throat> Here, Nepal, Nepal's scores are higher, which means it's bad news. We want the scores to be lower instead. So the pressing issue is our managers basically saying that they're going to do social responsibility and are they following that with actions? Are they the same or are they following that with real actions from their organizations? That's one pressing issue. And the other issue is, is there a relationship that we can establish between profits and CSR spending by their particular organizations? These are the, these are the two issues that uh, I'm looking in this particular study. So, very simple hypothesis that comes from those two um, issues. First hypothesis is that top managers, CSR mentioned or attention to CSR is significantly related to their organization CSR spending. If, if a CEO is saying that we're going to be socially responsible, hopefully they are socially responsible. <coughs> this comes from upper echelon theory, where we believe that top managers uh, decisions, their actions are interpreted, they, that their, what they say is dependent on who they are and because top managers have all the authority that they can bring a change. And the second hypothesis also follows from that um, question is that is corporate profit, cor corporate profit is significantly related to CSR spending. If a corporation is are making a lot of money, Hopefully they have extra resources to devote towards uh, social responsibility efforts. Now, my, my methods are fairly rudimentary, very basic, because this study is sort of in the preliminary stage that it's, gonna, it's not method, methodologically uh, sophisticated at this point. However, the variables that I'm measuring are CSR mention, how often are managers mentioning CSR to their stakeholders, the CSR expense that's reported and corporate profit. These are the three variables. The source is annual reports of Nepal's commercial banks. And I take a decade old data, one, one decade of data. So from fiscal year 2011, 12 to fiscal year 2020, 21. And I just use simple analysis. Like I said, it's not method, methodologically sophisticated at this point. Just to, just a simple uh, analysis here. Uh, just a brief snapshot uh, of the commercial banks that I'm using in this study. And this is the finding in terms of the correlation that I observed. And the only significant finding that you see here is between variable two and variable three. No other significance. So what does this mean? Basically, it means that what CSR, all the talk that top managers are talking, basically doesn't really translate into 
actual CSR spending from their organization. There is no significant relationship that's found. So H1 is not supported. H2 is supported, but moderately. Um, conclusion, your actions speak louder than words. That if you don't do what, if you, don't do what you say, that, that's just empty promises. That's, there's no point in that. And the conclusion is that CSR does go well with profit, that we saw that when organizations are profitable, there is moderate relationship between profit and CSR. Why, why ethics? Why, why corporate social responsibility? Basically, research says that companies that are ethical outperform their peers. Uh, over a five-year period, they outperform their peers by 24.6%. They have 24.6% they have uh, uh, more return compared to their regular peers. So businesses that are ethical win in the long term, even though in the short term that might not be the case. So what are the implications? Basically that responsible managers should follow their words with concrete actions. That Nepali managers, Nepali businesses, businesses shouldn't just engage in CSR that's about compliance, that they should go beyond, that there's, there is room for improvement. <coughs> limitation, I observe here, the limitation is that I'm using data only from four private commercial banks. I'm not using government-owned uh, commercial banks. I'm just using four biggest uh, private commercial banks. Uh, this is going to expand, of course. Also, I'm using content analysis to obtain manager's CSR attention. And content analysis itself is a, uh, it has limited scope in terms of explanatory power. So that's the limitation, I think. Um, and with that, I end my talk. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Bernardi. Missing on the time.